All right, so welcome back to our first actual part or part one for our create a Discord clone from scratch using Flask and Flask Flask Socket IO. Okay, so today what we're going to do is enable basic chatting. So we're going to create a basic and minimum chatting room, which by definition it's essentially a room that user can just live chatting with. So like user can just chat. So we're not gonna do any login, any fancy stuff. No, we're just gonna create a basic room. Then we're going to start add more features based on that. Um, so also in the prerequisites section in the part zero teaser video, I forgot to mention that you also need JavaScript knowledge. Also, since Socket IO really going to use JavaScript, it's not like Bitly clone where JavaScript is not really necessary. Here, JavaScript knowledge is really needed. And then uh, I also have a JavaScript tutorial and I take a look at um, and they have really good Mozilla documentation, which you can take a look and make sure you know ES6, specifically the arrow function that's going to be really important. All right. So let's talk about dependency. But before I talk about that, I'm just going to go to my GitHub and then in here, what I'm going to say is here. So feel free to uh, make a pull request on the bit.ly clone. I'm going to make, um, even, even though it finished that series, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to make changes. I will make changes and you are welcome to make issues and pull request. So repository name, I'm just going to call this Discord clone. Public. In the first part, I don't. I realize I said it to private, but I said back to public. And then uh, let's not add any. MIT lesson. A Discord. Call. All right. Creating that repository. Good. Let me go ahead. Copy. Here, okay. Oops. All right. So no worry if you didn't see what I what I just did. It's basically just clone this repository with a fancy Git. And then uh, open this in Visual Studio Code. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and talk about the dependency we need. So you need Flask Socket IO. This is the first dependency we need. And then we also need Flask. So to install these at once, you can type pip install Flask Socket IO Flask. And press Enter. Which for you, it should install a list of dependency, but I'm just gonna quit because um, I already have it. So to make it easier, since we are now using virtual environment, we will just use is we will use requirements.txt every time we install. By now, you should know what this requirement.txt is for. But if you don't, don't worry about it. It's just a way to keep track with dependency we have. So have flask socket IO and obviously flask. And you also need a min file, a static folder, message.js, and a template folder. Instead of there, we got layout.html and message.html okay so let's go to layout first uh, no. Text. 
content layout HTML. Lock. And then say block me. And we need this. Um, okay. And we also need the um, make sure you're using Google's uh, make sure you're not using uh, bootstraps uh, bootstraps um, jQuery CDN because a slim version doesn't support everything you need um, we need first is to do let me just go ahead and search socket IO JS CDN. So I can just copy and paste. Hope this will work. This should work, right? I hope it work. And then got bootstrap. We we'll also need jQuery oh, Come on, just tell me that Oh my god. Why couldn't you just print out this time you could go see him? Okay, I didn't expect I need that long time to get the CDN, but I'll then we'll avail my blog, which is that is me blog dot blogspot com. We need three point two point one. Higher so better so all right so now we should have this to work um and then let me go and say I block here let me finish inheritance I'll just say message All right, so the first thing we will do is we will go ahead and um, we don't need layout anymore. So we just need to go ahead and fill out this message. So we're going to create a form. We call that a form, HTML form. By now, it should be real familiar with it. Um, but we will do something different today. Okay, we'll do something different. So. I'm gonna do this. Send message. And then text area. Class. This good for message. All right. Got everything set up. Now, if we just go ahead and take a look. So, we would actually not go ahead and see until we finish because for some reason, I need to, whenever I change something in JavaScript file, it 
doesn't automatically reload. And sometimes even if I manually go to this URL, refresh, and it still doesn't work. So we will just go ahead and do that when we finish and see if do we get an error or not. Okay, so this is our message, the HTML send message. And then what we'll do is now we're actually finished with our message.html. Now I'm gonna go ahead and code our message.js. So the first thing is we're gonna do this window.onload equals function e. Do this. All right. So basically, what happens is it tells you that when unloading this, I think it's when it, I don't really know actually. So this fires immediately after the browser loads the object. Fires immediately after the browser loads the object. Yeah. So basically, this is just some attribute we need to make sure that it's finished loading. And then, then what we can say is we are going to use dollar sign. Recall that most likely when you see a dollar sign JavaScript, it's most likely a jQuery thing. So now we're going to say is message form. Recall this is the ID we we'll give to the form dot submit, which means if the form submit, which means the user click on button. By the way, we don't have a button defined here. Submit button, and then we just say send a message. Gonna pretty look like it's gonna look ugly for now, but we're just gonna keep it simple. Uh, so this happens. So by default, when you submit an HTML form, it's going to automatically refresh. But we don't and send it to a server. But we don't want to do that. What we want to do instead is since it's live chatting, we're using Discord or some service like that. You realize that it doesn't refresh once you send the message. Still, still here, still there. So what we will do is when the user submit this form, and then we'll and we will go ahead and substitute a function. I don't know why I have this. And then we use a submit this function. You can see we take a parameter called e. This is basically a function function thing, and then e for event. And then we're gonna by default gonna say e dot prevent default. This basically tells a um, tells a browser okay when it uses submit the form leave it there leave it there. So we will see what the user want to do, but the user tell me just leave it there so we won't refresh it. And then I believe the reason they design channel form when you submit it automatically refreshes also some security reason. Um, okay, so this is the first thing that we're going to do. The second thing is we're going to use socket. Recall that socket is a modern tool that's in our mo in most modern browsers. It's um, enable, it's what's going to happen to make us able to do some live chatting. So first is we're going to connect to a socket. First, we're going to initial initialize this connect to a socket. By create a socket variable, and then where should we connect the socket to? Well, we're gonna use io dot connect. Io is um, a, io is imported from the from uh, uh, the socket from this socket uh, script. So in case you are wonder where's io come from, I don't think io comes default with JavaScript. All right, so I'll dot connect. What we'll say now is we'll say location dot protocol plus um, and then plus document dot domain plus colon plus location dot. I don't know why it's giving me this location. Okay, so this basically, wait, I think it's port, right? Okay, yeah. So basically what's happening is this get the protocol, which is either HTTP or HTTPS most likely. 
And then let's get the domain, which in this case is 127.0.0.1 most likely. And it gets a port, which is 5000 most likely. All right, now connect to a socket. Um, so now we're actually going to use a socket. So here is a little bit cryptic syntax, and I say socket dot on, and then we're going to say connect, and then we're going to use an arrow function here. Okay, so what's happening here is we're doing this when the when we connect it to this web socket. Okay, and then this is going to happen when the web so socket is connected. So first is we want to get the form. We want to get the value of what user want to send. Then we can pass it to the backend. And then backend will, for now we're not gonna do some processing, but backend will do some processing eventually and then send it back to the front end. So first is we need to get the button. And just let me make sure, button. Send message button. All right, so you need to give an ID. You will now know what's that, what's that button for. So we're going to say var button equals to document dot get element by ID, and then send message button. So this is going to go ahead and get the button which is a standard scene what we want to do when we want to check the form's value. And the reason we do that, excuse me, is we're going to use this onClick attribute. So when the form, when the user clicked the, this button, which means they want to submit the form, want to do the following content. By the way, this is called arrow function, introducing ES6. Basically, um, here's how normal function look like. So function name, do stuff here. Instead, uh, an arrow function is like usually used by some default, so it's like function It's usually look, used like this, so it's not a name and then Or something like this, so function name Well, I don't really know for I don't really know arrow function to be honest but this is how arrow function works this is the parameter that we're gonna pass in and this is a curly braces and then that's why I said JavaScript experience is going to be really helpful here and now I'm gonna go ahead and get the message which we could say by type message equals to document get element by ID message dot value so, by default, this is going to give us HTTP elements, but we really want to get the what user's input is, so we're going to use value attribute. All right, now is what going to make our project really work, is we're going to use a emit method in our socket variable. So we're going to say socket emit. And then what we're going to say is broadcast message. So what I usually think of this is we create a socket function in some sort. And then we're going to pass following information. So we're going to say message equals message. So this is a dictionary where object. So What's happening here is this what we will code in backend also. So it's like a process. So it's front end to back end, then transfer back to front end. Because you want them able to connect together. This is a process we're going to use. So what's happening here, this will be another sort of socket function, so to speak. We code it in backend, and then it's going to handle when this function get called. So you can just think as a way to call a function or emit. So this basically send the value to the backend. And now we are going to do one more thing is another create another socket function in some sort called show message. And then we're just gonna take some data 
so data is the since we only have one parameter, um, we don't have to use parentheses in the error function. And then for now, we're just gonna console.log data the message. So you can talk about how do we actually handle this data message. Recall data is just an object. Message data is an object, and then message is like a property in that object. And so we can get that. All right. Now let's go ahead and code our backend. So that is all for front end. It's a little bit confusing at first. So I really hope you can get get some practice and try to uh, twitch code a little bit. See what's gonna happen. All right. So first is we'll go ahead and import some dependencies from Flask. Import Flask. Render template. And from Flask socket IO. Import socket IO emit. So emit is a function that's called that's actually going to call the function. So we're gonna pass parameter in. It's from here. Yep, yeah, no worries. Okay. Just in case, let me run this file. I don't know why it's have read squiggly line there. All right, pretty good. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and set up our app. Flask find this. App.config secret key. And then I'm gonna say socket IO equals socket IO. Ah, so we're gonna socket IO nify this Flask nified app. So we can use socket IO. All right, so by first route, we're gonna implement, we're gonna implement one route only today. Is the index route, which we're just gonna return our message. Now, however, here's the thing that important. So you're gonna say at socket IO dot on, and then we're gonna say broadcast message. So this is like an event we created in the front end where so a socket function, um, quote unquote, and then we're gonna recall that's also a decorator. So this is going to get called when this get run, when the the button clicked and the information emitted. So you can just start a way to connect front end and back end together. And then we're gonna say message display data. So this is gonna take a parameter called data, which is gonna have all the data we got. From uh, this uh, uh, this object or dictionary, and then what we will say is for now we're just simply gonna emit again. So we're gonna emit a socket IO event, which you can read more documentation here. And then we're gonna re emit it back to our client side or JavaScript. So we're gonna say show message, and then here we're gonna uh, take in some parameter, which is message data bracket message. So this is just a dictionary. And now we initialize a new dictionary to pass it back. And now we make sure we need to broadcast this message. Broadcast equal to true. Okay, so that's a lot of stuff. Um, you probably don't get all of this in the first try, but I would just finish this off. So when this emit uh, event, this means Okay, it's going to call this event in the client side web socket, provide with this data, and now we should be able to see the uh, the message con log into our console. So would this actually work? I don't know. Actually, did I? I probably forgot to link this file also. So it'll say script source slash static slash message js. All right, let's go ahead and run this file and take a look what error do we get, which I hope we get. We don't get any error. All 
Oh yeah. So to run this file, we need to use something different. We're gonna use if name equals equals main. Recall that's how we run another way to run the fast file. But this time I'm gonna say socket io dot run. So we we'll check as a parameter app. Uh, this is how it's actually gonna run our socket IO app successfully. So we got no error. So we're gonna say Python three app .py. So we're not gonna use Flask commands to run this, but we're gonna use socket IO. And let's wait a minute. It's gonna take a little bit long. Okay, let's take a while. Let's take longer than expected, I have to say. But Okay, I had to admit it takes a little bit longer for some reason. Shouldn't take that long. Oh, this run button also works. Oh, okay, well, I don't know. Okay, let's try again. Error, i in use. Just gonna run them port there. Alright, let's give a sec. Let's give a sec to let it work. Okay, well, I don't know what. Okay, I guess we're gonna keep waiting on his running. Probably cut this part out. But... That's really weird. Why this doesn't? Oh, this part already running. I just don't know it. Okay. Well, yeah, because I didn't set debug mode. <laughs> if it's actually true, then that's I mean that's embarrassing. We got internal server error. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Template. I don't know why I didn't name this. The only hope I hope is I don't change any JavaScript file. Alright, let's go ahead and open up our console. Hopefully we see a message there. Okay. Cannot read on purple. I'm gonna take a look of that. Oh shouldn't change JavaScript. Oh well, we're just gonna handle this. Alright, so now I know why this is not working. Because it doesn't display to me, I forgot about that. Uh, send message button. <laughs> not bot, um, button. All right. Okay. Steal. Let's 
See that what I said? See, it doesn't get updated for some reason. So you what you usually would do is go slash static uh, message.js. As you can see here, it's still button set here. Button now. This is also button. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how to solve that issue. I don't know when this Python. What I usually do is manually change it here. I don't know. Sometimes it doesn't work for some reason. Okay, let's try to send message. Oh my god, why, why, why? Okay. Let's try again. Oh, I'm gonna have JavaScript here because I don't know why this doesn't get reloaded. Okay. Let's give a sec. Okay, I said debug mode's on, so I don't think I have any excuse still saying the straight that error. Okay, well, I mean, that's changed. So is it because still is not the same? Then linked it at the bottom, right? Oh, I spelled message wrong also. Well, spelling matters. Spelling matters. Slash static, slash message, slash JS. That was always going to happen to me when you do programming. So easy mistake. Oh, well, that's probably explained. All right, let's go console. Send message. All right, as you can see, it doesn't work. So we'll go ahead and start some debugging. Oh, wait, no, it doesn't work. Okay, let's try to see, can I? Okay, so I think it should work. That's... That's really the most fun part of programming, just to debug the error. All right, just to check whether it's clicked or not, and then say. Click. Uh, okay. Slash static. Okay, now it works. Now it works, as you can see. Now it says hi here. I don't know why that time it doesn't work. And then you can say everyone. Now if I just, I'm not gonna remove this. And now if I say, if I say um, hello world, my name is Davis Me. Thanks for watching this video. Now you can see it works. All right, so as you can see now, what I would do again is, is you can see I have two tabs open, and now what would be really cool is I would do a split screen here, 
Now what would be really cool is really cool about it is when I send using the right, it's also displays it in the left. So if I say I'm right, now you can also see that the information displays here as well. So that enables the auto chat. So yay, live chatting is working now. And now that's the magic of sockets. All right, thanks for watching. Um, please make sure you do subscribe and like this video if you enjoy more content, as I will publish at least one video and most likely another co-words challenge or some other small videos. Um, thanks for all my 10, now it's 12 subscribers. Thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time.